Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about a Chrome extension that I have recently started using to enhance my reading experience online and for different kinds of research. It is called Wise One. They are a company based in France and you can learn more about their team in their About Us page. They have developed a special text processing AI which is a collection of multiple algorithms which are specialized to do things like summarizing articles and extract main facts and topics from an article. They also cross-check these with their own dataset and their algorithms keep getting better as more news, events and facts get fed into their dataset. At the moment they have already worked on over 80,000 websites and every time someone clicks allow on a specific website using the Chrome extension, that gets added as well. It is worth noting that WiseOne does not use OpenAI or GPT-4 in the background and it uses its own algorithms for all the work. They are also the kind sponsor of this video, so hopefully by the end, you'll also learn how to use WiseOne for your own research. Alright, let's get started. So the first step you need to do is to go on this website called wiseone.io and download their Chrome extension using your Google account. I already have it installed on my browser, so that's why it says remove from Chrome. Before downloading any extensions, I always recommend everybody to check the credentials. Here you might see that it says this is created by the owner of this website called wiseone.io. And as you see, it has already been featured by Chrome and has over 30,000 users. After you have it downloaded, make sure to go to your extensions and use this pin icon to pin it to your browser. After you do that, it's going to show up as this gray icon right here. This is the grayed out version of this icon on the left, which is in blue. This is because you haven't logged in yet. So a couple of things to mention here is that WiseOne does require you to create an account, which you can access using this My Account button right here. So if you click on that, it takes you to the account creation page of WiseOne. I already have an account, but if you don't have an account, you can either sign up with Google or create an account using this email and password. I'm going to log in with the credentials that I have already. And now you see I'm logged in with my email and the icon becomes blue. Now, if you click on the extension again, you're going to see three options right here. The first one says allow extension for this site. This means all the information on the current website is now accessible to Wise One. Now, if you disable this by clicking it right here, you can't access any information on this page. So if you want to remove Wise One's access from any website, you can just do that and click refresh. And now it's going to say Wise One is not available on this page. Now, if you want to re-allow Wise One to access this website, all you do is to click Allow again and you're good to go. Now, there's three main functionalities that Wise One has. The first one is called Summarize. The next one is called Suggestions. And the third one is Ask Anything. Let's go over them one by one. To give you a good understanding of the Summarize feature, I'm going to use this website called sfexaminer.com. This is a San Francisco-based newspaper that I go to quite often. I don't like reading an entire day's worth of news as a short bullet list. I actually like going on individual articles and looking at pictures and learning more about what happened. But the issue is a lot of times these news articles are really wordy or full of ads. So what I do now instead is use Wise One. For example, we have this article about San Francisco having really expensive trash cans. Now while being on this page, all I do is go on Wise One and click summarize. It now gives me the key takeaways. It says San Francisco's new slim silhouette trash can design has faced further setbacks after the city's design review committee declined to approve it due to concerns over potential graffiti and maintenance issues. The proposed design was estimated to cost between $2,000 to $3,000 per trash cans when mass-produced. Also, the approval process for the new trash can design is likely to take years, with the manufacturer not expected to be chosen until 2024, an installation taking at least six more months. So now I know exactly what is happening in this article and see if it's worth reading more. Now, this summarized feature is especially useful on websites like New York Times where a lot of these articles are actually paywalled and you need to pay at least one dollar a week and log in to access all the information. What I do is click on an article and instantly go to my Wise One summarizer to get the summary of the article. Let's try it out right now with this article called US drug shortages are near an all-time high leading to rationing. So all I do is click on this article and go to my summarizer and click summarize right away. Now as you see in the bottom, New York Times does not let me read the whole article, but Wise One has done my summarization already. 
so I don't need to provide my email and subscribe to New York Times if I don't want to. Now, I personally do subscribe to a different newspaper, so I'm not against paid media, but for this specific article, I'm not a subscriber of New York Times and I don't want to pay for this one article. Now, instead, I can just get the key takeaways from Wise One. It says drug shortages in the United States are approaching record levels with hundreds of medications in short supply, including generic forms of chemotherapy leading to delays in treatments of life-threatening diseases. The Biden administration has assembled a team to find long-term solutions for shoring up pharmaceutical supply chain. The underlying causes of a faltering generic drug market, including an opaque and interrupted supply chain, are commanding the attention of Congress. Now from these takeaways, now from these takeaways, I already have a general idea of what's happening in this article, and that's usually enough for me. Now, it's important to note that if the page has loaded already, this might not work. So if I refresh this page again and let it load all the way, now if I try the summarizer, you're going to see the summary is actually about the subscription. It's not about that article anymore. So you do need to be a bit quick if you want to try this out. The next feature I want to talk about is Wise One Suggestions. So I have this article which says what's in store for San Francisco after its stores leave. So since the pandemic, a bunch of stores have actually left downtown San Francisco. So if I want to learn more about such kind of events in San Francisco, whether this is a one-time thing, whether this has happened in the past, all I do is to go to Wise One and click on this suggestion feature. And now it's going to pull up a bunch of articles which shows similar occurrences at different times in history. For example, we have this article from 2017 where Nordstrom actually closed in Santa Ana, which is a different city in California. Now we also have this article from 2012 where similar kinds of shutdown happened in malls. Now you might be wondering why do I care about something which happened so long ago? And the answer is patterns and research. So sometimes when you're learning about an event which is happening in the current day, sometimes it's a result of a pattern that has been going on for a long time. For example, here we have an article from 2021 which says San Francisco grocery store closing earlier due to shoplifting. And San Francisco has been facing issues with shoplifting ever since the pandemic. So with Wise One suggestions, you can do some research on whether this event is new or it has been happening for quite some time. So basically, these are being pulled in from Wise One's database for your research. The next feature I want to talk about is called Ask Anything. But before I start on that, I want you to pay attention to this page a little bit. You're going to see that there's a bunch of underlines and highlights that have happened in blue. Now, where's that coming from? It actually came from Wise One, which actually highlights different things on the page for you to browse without going on a different website. For example, you might not know what North Beach or Fisherman's Wharf is. So all you do is hover over it and it's going to tell you straight from Wikipedia Wikipedia that North Beach is a neighborhood in the northeast part of San Francisco adjacent to the Chinatown, the Financial District, and Russian Hill. This neighborhood is San Francisco's Little Italy and historically been home to a large Italian-American population. Now let's hover over Fisherman's Wharf. Now it says Fisherman's Wharf is a neighborhood and popular tourist attraction in San Francisco. It roughly encompasses the northern waterfront area of San Francisco from Ghirardelli Square or Venice East to Pier 35. Now, usually when you don't understand something in an article like this thing called Bumblebee Tuna, which I don't know much about, I usually ignore it because it's not important enough for me to do another search. But if I can just hover over it and learn that Bumblebee Foods LLC is a company that produces canned tuna, salmon, other seafoods and chicken under the name Bumblebee Wild Selections Beach Cliff, then I don't need to do another search anymore and I can just gain some more information right on this page. So I think this is a really useful feature provided by Wise One, which can let me just hover over small things on the article without having to do a different search. Now there is another feature which gets enabled on your browsing experience as soon as you install Wise One and that is called cross-checking. For example, I have this article from TechCrunch which says Apple is on the hunt for generative AI talent. And there is the section right here which says Apple, like a number of companies right now, may be grappling with what role the newest advances in AI are playing and should play in its business. Now, while that is probably true, you can actually cross-check that information by just hovering over that section and clicking on it. And now Wise One will tell you some other sources where similar kinds of content has been published. For example, this website Seeking Alpha says we've seen that Apple is actually making a good move by taking things slowly with AI rather than a bad one. 
There is this other article published by Seeking Alpha in January which says with regards to AI development, Apple seems to be lagging competitors in big tech. So to conclude, we know that Apple is not rushing into AI the same way as some other companies are doing it. They are actually waiting and taking their time before releasing something so they know that the market is actually ready for that first. Another example of wise one cross-checking is this section which says the company was an early mover in the world of AI applications with the launch of the Siri voice assistant on iPhone in 2011. And for years, it had the reputation as one of the biggest technology companies identifying and recruiting AI talent. So if I were to cross-check this piece of data and wanted to confirm that Siri was actually launched in 2011, I can check this other article by Fox Business which says Apple was an early entry in bringing AI technology mainstream with the introduction of the Siri voice assistant in 2011. So we now have at least two articles from reputable sources which confirm that Siri was actually launched in 2011. And now if I want to learn more, I can just open up this article and open up the Wise One Summarizer to get a summary of what is happening here. And that way I can get the key takeaways from this article even though it's actually paywalled and I can't read the whole article. So now you saw both the cross-check and the summarizer feature working together to help me out in my research. By the way, if you don't want the wise one discover feature, that's the one where you hover over a piece of underlined text, or the cross-check feature as I just showed, you can just go back on the extension and disable those two buttons right here. So now the page does not have either cross-checking or the discover function. All right, the last feature I want to talk about is called ask anything. This is like a local chatbot for your article page. For example, sometimes when I have a physical issue like a headache or a back pain, which is not serious enough for me to go to the doctor right away, I just go on different medical websites such as Mayo Clinic and WebMD and sometimes Harvard's health website to learn more about what's going on. And sometimes a lot of these articles are really long and complicated and I don't know whether I should read the whole of it and whether it's worth understanding everything that's going on. And here is where wise one can come in really handy. For example, there's this word called migraine and I don't know whether my headache is a migraine. I can ask wise one on this website, what's the difference between a headache and migraine? And now Wise One will learn from this specific article and tell me the answer. It says a headache is a generic term for any pain in the head, while a migraine is a special type of headache that is usually more severe and often accompanied by other symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound and visual disturbances. Migraines often have a pulsating or throbbing quality and are usually felt on one side of the head. They can last for several hours or even days. While the exact cause of migraines is not fully understood, changes in the brain's blood flow and nerve selectivity are believed to play a role. Now what is the difference of asking such a question on this page versus directly on Google? So the thing is I first want to know that my source is legitimate. Here I'm getting my information from Harvard's medical school website and even here from Mayo Clinic so I know my sources are going to be much much higher quality. But if I do this search directly on Google, I might get all kinds of results which I don't know if they're legitimate. So instead, I prefer using Wise One on a legitimate website and do all my searching on a specific article without having to read the whole article and trying to understand everything. So now that I am on Mayo Clinic's website, I can ask it, what can I do to prevent headaches in the future? Now it says I have found no evidence regarding this fact in this article. Now you see how truthful wise one is. It tells me up front that it could not find anything relevant to my question from this article but it gives me some other suggestions such as getting enough sleep, staying hydrated, managing stress, avoiding triggers such as certain foods or drinks and practicing good posture. Now let me ask something else on the WebMD website about headaches. So I'm going to go here and ask it what can I do to alleviate my headaches? 
All right, it says the treatment of headaches depends on the specific type of headache you have. Once you know the type, you and your doctor can find the treatment that's more likely to help and even prevent them. Some treatments include over-the-counter pain relievers, prescription medications, relaxation techniques, and avoiding triggers. It's important to consult your doctor to find the best course of treatment. Now let me ask, what are some common symptoms of headaches? Now mind you, these are questions I would usually just Google directly, but as you see, my goal has changed. My goal is to now go on a legitimate website first and use Wise1 to query on that page so I know at least my information source is legitimate. It says the symptoms of headaches can vary depending on the type. Some common ones include pain or pressure in the head, sensitivity to light or sound, nausea or vomiting, and changes in vision. Other symptoms include dizziness, fatigue, or irritability. It's important to know that different kinds of headaches can have their own set of symptoms. Now, it keeps mentioning different kinds of headaches. So let me ask, what are some common kinds of headaches? All right, it says some common kinds are tension headaches, migraine cluster, chronic daily headaches, sinus headaches, post-traumatic headaches, exercise headaches, hemicrania continua, hormone headaches, new daily persistent headaches, rebound headaches, ice pick headaches, spinal headaches, and thunderclap headaches. Now, I had no idea there were so many kinds, and I'm happy that I have Wise1 to find that out from this long article for me. Because sometimes I don't need to know every single thing from a long article, and they have a reason to provide a long article because they want to provide all the information from all angles to the reader because they need to provide accurate information. And if you're on WebMD, usually the information is medically reviewed. Like here it says, this article has been reviewed medically by Jennifer Robinson, who is an MD, on September 2022. So my source of information here is much higher quality than a generic Google search. So it's important to have something like Wise1 installed on your browser to ask questions about long articles like these directly using this Ask Anything feature. So imagine Wise1 being your local chat GPT against this local set of information that is your training data. So just like ChatGPT has information up to 2021, Wise1 has information just from this article. So it will not make anything up and get all its information from the source of information that I want to choose. Now it's important to understand that Wise1 only works on text-based websites. So if you go on YouTube and try this out and click allow, here it says, sorry, there's no text provided for me to generate key takeaways. Please provide the text and I would be happy to help you out. So basically, Wise1 is a text-only tool and it's quite good at what it does. Now that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you got a good idea of how to use Wise1. And if you have any specific questions, make sure to add them to the comments. If you do have any feedback for Wise1, you can use this button right here called Give Feedback and provide them some feedback as they're working and improving this product. So I hope you got some value from today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter and my YouTube channel and click like on this video. Till the next one, thank you so much.